In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you some tips on using a new tool available for PowerDirector 365 subscribers. It's called Restoration Assistant, and the tool is designed to customize and speed up audio editing. So I have four different elements on track number one. Three of them are video clips with audio, and one is only an audio clip. You can use it on speech, you can use it on music. And it's supposed to give you some AI abilities to shorten the editing process when you're trying to clean up an audio track. I'm going to click on the first clip I have here, and then I'm going to click on the Edit button above the timeline. Once I do that, I see I have two tabs in the upper left corner. I have a Video tab and an Audio tab. I'm going to click on Audio. And then on audio, I have the second one down called Restoration Assistant. And if I want to activate that, I use the button below the description. So I'm going to click on that button. Then it gives me two kinds of primary source audio that I need to focus on. Is it mostly dialogue or mostly music? In this case, it's an interview, so I'm going to use dialogue. Now the first time you click on that, what will happen is you will not see this screen. You will see a similar screen with a progress monitor. It will download the new code into your 365 subscription and then install it. And then you will see this analysis bar and the progress on the analysis of that particular clip. I'm going to pause the video until this is done and then we'll resume. What the tool has done is it's analyzed it and it's given me a screen which has six different sliders. Now the Restoration Assistant has decided that these are the areas that need some attention or may need some attention. And it's moved the sliders in these particular places because of its analysis of the audio track. You can turn off any of these, like click removal, and I can turn it back on and I can move the slider manually myself. In a moment, I'm going to show you a little bit about how this compares with different clips that you see on the screen because I did look and the numbers are different on each clip. So there is some true analysis. This, this is not simply a default set of numbers that applies in every case. So it attempts to intelligently think through your audio for you. But if you want to know exactly what these sliders are about, click on the I and it gives you a pretty decent analysis of what that particular kind of tool is designed to do. Again, you can turn any of these sliders on or off, or you can actually, if they're activated, move them manually for, to another value if that's what you want to do. Note at the bottom you also have a preview. You can preview it and listen in the original mode. I'm going to click on that. We'll play that for just a little bit. And the students bit. will watch the videos at home, and then we'll just do homework together in class. That's called a flipped class. Then I'm going to click on the fixed mode and listen. Okay. So that's what I'll be doing over the summer, prepping for that. So I think so. Education, the, the, the core doesn't change. It does. So that's a way in which you can analyze it. So I would encourage you before you click on the apply button to click on the fixed and see if it works the way you want. Now what it will actually do, in case of a video clip, it will split the video and the audio. It will remove the audio on the timeline and replace it with the repaired or enhanced audio. It will not mess with the original again, but it will change it on the track automatically so you don't have to do all that manual stuff yourself. So I'm going to click on the apply button here in this case on this clip and let's see what happens. It says it's rendering the new audio clip. So it's going to go into the mode. We'll see a progress bar again. It will replace the audio in my clip number one on track one. And I'll pause and then we'll get back to this. It's finished. And if you look at the, the track in the lower left corner, you notice that the waveform has changed some from what it was. I also note that there's still some clipping here. So I'm going to manually have to adjust that to get rid of all of the clipping that I happen to have in this particular audio clip. And so you still have to tweak it a little bit when you're done, but it's a great time saver. Let's look at one that's simply audio only. If I click on that and click on my Restoration Assistant, I'm going to call this one Music. 
And because it's a music click, it'll analyze it really rapidly. It's very short. I'm going to get a pop-up screen in a moment. And you notice my pop-up screen for the Restoration Assistant is different in the case of music. I only have four sliders in this case. So if there was audio, it did not pay attention to them. And again, it will set them intelligently. Here, the only thing it looked like it did was some de-essing. Again, you can listen to it in the original. Let's listen to a few bars of the, the music there. And then likewise, I can listen to it as it's been fixed. And when I'm done, I can click on the Apply button and it will replace the clip like it did the other one. And there it is, slightly modified. I have the adjustment here. What you're looking at on the screen now is the Restoration Assistant pop-up window as applied to three of the video clips that I had on the timeline. And if you look at the items that are checked and the items that are unchecked and you look at the values on the right, you'll notice they're different in each of these three. So that tells me that there was some intelligent analysis going on through the software. It did not apply the same characteristics to each of the three clips. In this screenshot, I've compared the first two, which are basically audio, with the last one, which is music. And you notice again that the screen is different. The functions are basically the same. What I would recommend doing before you rely on this totally in order to edit your audio tracks is to make sure you listen a little bit to the difference between the fixed and the original in any case, and then go ahead and apply it. And if you'd applied an editing item that you want to change back to the original, you can still do the Control Z combination and that will restore it. In the first clip, for example, I now have the audio and video together. They are not split. So with Control Z, you can get back to the start if you decide you want to start all over again. That's an initial look for Restoration Assistant in PowerDirector 365.